All right, guys, and we are back. We got Paul Del Pozo, my man from Prop Stream. Paul, how the hell are you today, buddy? I'm great, man. I'm great. How you doing, man? Now after this long Memorial Day weekend, we're recharged. We're headed into the summer, so it's beautiful to connect with you this morning, man. How hell you doing? yeah, man. I'm excited to have you. I know my listeners and my viewers are going to eat this up. So today, guys, we are going to be diving into Prop Stream. We're going to be talking about analyzing analyzing other markets. So if you're doing any virtual wholesaling, this will be very, very helpful to you, um, not only to analyze your own market, but also to be able to analyze other markets that you may be wanting to explore or do some marketing. Uh, lastly, we're gonna touch on the cash buyer tool over at PropStream, which is one of my favorite tools, but this will allow you to get, again, cash buyers, both locally, but also in other markets that you may be exploring. So Paul, my man over here at PropStream is gonna help us today. He's gonna walk us through and show us some of the awesome tools that we have at PropStream. Um, we're gonna do some market analysis, both on my market here in St. Louis, Missouri, but then also another market that I'm looking to start exploring and doing some marketing in, um, as well as you know how we're gonna go about building our buyers list in that new market. You know, I already have a buyers list from six years of local investing and wholesaling here in my city of St. Louis, but if I was going to go into a second or a third market, I'm gonna need and I'm gonna want that buyers list so I can start selling those deals once I get them. So, Paul, again, thanks for coming on today. We appreciate you. Let's jump right on in. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. Let's dive into this, man. I'm, I'm excited about um, our discussion because I love talking about the power of prop stream outside of our local markets, right? A lot of us have our systems. A lot of us that have been in business for a while, like yourself, you have your current systems, you have your current way of, of doing business, maybe uh, the way of, of getting your list, maybe the way of, mm -hmm. of um, you know, comping your properties. So PropStream might be a, a way to kind of enhance that, might make it easier. But what do you do when you are outside of your local market? Right? Like, what do you do when you need to comp in a market that you're not familiar? Maybe you don't have any contacts there. Maybe you have zero experience, but you know there's some good opportunity. Or simply, a lead just came in and you want to work, right? So I'm going to dive in here into my prop stream screen. Well, um, as you see here, we're on uh, the United States. It's a nationwide platform, so we can search anywhere. So let's start off in your local market, right? So you're St. Louis, in Missouri. St. Louis, good old St. Louis, Missouri. We, Missouri is the show me state, Paul. Show me, show, show me. me let's data, show baby. me some opportunities over here, That's right? So right. here we are in St. Louis, man. So this is your local market, right? Mm -hmm. So we can um, do what we do, you know, do our property search, do our property an analysis, pull our, our lists, whatever it may be for, for Missouri. But let's just imagine for a moment, you are thinking about diving into Kansas City and you really wanna know what's going on, right? So simply, we go into Kansas City or any city that you're trying to um, do Mo. some, Kansas City do some due diligence, do some analysis, right? Do you the do Kansas City, Missouri side. You want the Missouri side first? I want the Missouri side, yeah, because as far as I'm aware, and well, maybe we can analyze this, but as far as as far as I know, the majority of the population lives in the Missouri side of Kansas City, not the Kansas side, but again, maybe this will be. We so now we're in the Missouri right. side, right? And here we're gonna know quickly that question whether what's what on what side of, of the border, right? We mm -hmm. can simply answer that by going into an analytics button here, and we can look at price growth. Ooh, I didn't even know that growth. existed, bro. Magic little secret hiding Whoa. spots that we have these tools in. So I like price that. growth, right? We have the ability to choose between five-year price growth or one-month price, uh, price growth, right? So if we want to take a look to see uh, in the past, how has this market been, been doing? You know, has it been growing? Has it been exploding? In the last five years, we see a good amount of red in the general you know area here that we're looking yeah at. Zoom in, zoom out, whatever we want to do but here we see in the in the dark dark red we have a hundred percent growth all the way down to our light blue which is a hundred percent loss right mm -hmm. we don't really see any blue here on the map so easily we can see that there have been some hot pockets over the last five years throughout the whole regional area of, of missouri and kansas right 
um, we could get a little bit further in, zoom in a little bit closer if we want to analyze a little bit uh, tighter on our on our uh, on our map here, or we can change our filter down to let's analyze what's been happening in the last six months. Now this oh, we is can interesting. Really right? see our hot spots now. Right. So now this is really interesting. In the last six months on the Kansas side, it looks like there's been a ton of activity here in the red. Right. And we can, mm. again, look at our our color growth or our color chart and we can tell what the red means here at this zoom level. Right. It'll change oh, wow. as we change uh, as we zoom in and out and also change on the categories. So here we have 50 percent growth in the last six months. Right. So we could back it up a step. This is one year growth. 100% growth in the red. So quickly, we can identify pockets we may want to take a look at, maybe want to examine more, uh, simply maybe want to start marketing, just dropping mail into this little general area. We could pencil it out. Boom, boom, boom. Search, go into our filter set, and now start creating filters for that specific hot zone that we've penciled out on the, on the map there. Wow, that's cool. I really like that. Right, and you have like we, a little heat map, essentially. Exactly, and that's what really it is. Here, let me cancel this pencil. Let's get this out, right? And we will zoom out. And the cool thing is, this isn't just like a local uh, analysis tool. It's a nationwide analysis tool. You know, we're talking about you know looking at a at a market right next door to you, right? Not too far away from you. But mm -hmm. what if you were looking at markets clear across on the other side of the country, all the way in California? you know, or all the way East Coast, wherever it may be, right? You can pick where you want to go and really analyze the activity based on the category that you've chosen here in the analytics section. Awesome. Right. What are some of the other analytics that we, options that we have here? Right, so we can do rent values and I'll show you where this is helpful. Since sometimes we're trying to figure out where the low rents are versus the high rents and keep this in mind, right? Some of these tools are, are better on, on the micro level uh, than overhead in, in, than the entire country, right? So sure, for sure. the rentals, right? I like using the rentals. Like, let's go to some cash flow market somewhere in the Midwest somewhere. Let's just go over here by you again. And then we could zoom in, right? And then what, as we zoom in, this is really helpful in identifying the low rents versus the high rents in a certain town, certain area. Maybe you're looking for rental properties. And this is one way for you to look at the data and analyze where you want to focus or spend your time ah, marketing, like calling, doing whatever it may be you're doing in your business. Yes, I like it. here. I like and if we go to the color, color chart, again, it's going to tell us high rents versus low rents. It looks like there's a lot of low rents here, right? We're, we're in this light blue to blue to a little darkish blue. I don't see any yellows. I don't see any reds, right? Meaning this is, an, I, it is not a high rent area. Mm -hmm. But for to show you the clear contrast of that, we zoom out and go to like New York or something where the, the rents are super expensive. Mm. You'll see a lot of blood red in that corner, right? Yes. Go in there, boom, see? There you oh, go. wow. Over, these really are 5,000 plus runs, right? Expensive, expensive. Oh, so, man. real easy way to identify whether it's in your local area or nationwide where the rents are. Let's look at some more. We looked at price growth when we started, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. show you here on a, on a full uh, nationwide perspective, right? So, we'll do uh, price growth in the last year, boom, right? We also have MLS info. We can look at, and this is, not ideal for you know nationwide perspective. You want to zoom in on this one, uh, but you can take a look at your large homes, uh, small homes, bedroom counts, listing price, all that stuff based on a color representation. Oh wow, on that's the really cool. Level. I like that. Right, so let's that. do listing price and zoom in. Yeah, let's go back to KC Mo if we can. All right. Okay. So now we're in okay. the city. And now we got much, uh, much down, much closer down into. And we're into and we're based on. Are we doing price per foot or are we doing just foot? Oh, this is uh, listing li price. This is listing price, is right? Listing and then price. we have okay. square footage. So we're the big homes, small homes, and again, this is based off the MLS data set. Of course, right? yeah, of course. And then I really we have like listing the listing price. price though, because that's going to show you where your affluent neighborhoods are at. And exactly. if you are wanting to, you know, buy in those areas for wholesale, I mean, that's typically where your biggest profits are going to be, at least from what I've seen, is on the more expensive homes. Or if you're doing maybe lease options, you know, you want to kind of look at the nicer homes, right? That may be a good area, again, to target 
um, or to not target. Again, a lot, a lot of times when you're doing analysis, it's not so much trying to find something, but it's also excluding areas you know that you may be wasting money marketing it. So wow, exactly. I think that's I'm really so glad cool. you said that because excluding and understanding where you shouldn't be is a big part of you know. Oh yeah, analyzing the data and really understanding where you should focus. Right. There's, so is this lat this one here is estimated value? Estimated value, right? So okay, same, cool. same. It works the same thing. You could choose estimated value um or estimated value by divided by square foot or lot square footage or mm -hmm. value, right and compare it that way but here too right so you get an understanding of the highs versus the lows down here on the on the local street level or you could zoom higher up into the city level wow i didn't even know that little analytics tool did anything i always saw it up there in the corner and I, I don't even think I've ever clicked on it. So that is going to be huge. So then on top of that, you have this, this thing that popped up right here. Wow. I was just getting ready to have you point at that. And this is for the market in a whole, right? So whatever's basically up in your search bars is what's going to be down here. Exactly. Maybe, guess, and then you can define maybe what's the period. Into a, to a region, right? Exactly. And then you can actually, you can actually, you can actually change your data sets. You can do last 30 days or last 90 days. Wow, I like it. That's really cool. So what this is going to show you is the cost per foot, guys. This is going to show you, you know, new pre foreclosures. It's going to show you the average days on market, the average monthly rent in this area. Um, it's got list price versus sale price, which is helpful. And then days on market versus inventory. So these are really, really great tools to understand your market or another market very quickly. And you can see trends, but I really like how you can adjust the time span too. So you can see if a market's heating up or if it's cooling off based on, you know, maybe the last year versus the last 90 days worth of data. So I love that it's just simple one or two clicks to analyze and see what's going on with the market, where those medium averages are at and those days on market and really just kind of see what's going on. So, wow, what a cool tool. And we've broken it down in these easy to, 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 to read and understand graphs, right? Because numbers and data can be a little bit, can be a little bit daunting sometimes, especially if you stare at spreadsheets all day long, it can be crazy, right? You know uh, what I, I see or I find is less is more. You don't you need better, 30 man. different metrics. That's just going to confuse you. You just need to know the main ones. And that's what you guys are providing. So that's sweet. I exactly. absolutely love that. So let's, let's dive into, so we're exploring now looking other areas, right? And looking at other markets. So let's say for instance here, we were just looking at the Missouri side of things. Mm -hmm. And in your analysis, you've determined that maybe on the other side of the border, there are some pockets of opportunity, right? Mm. Maybe you've never bought or sold in that market before. Mm. And what do you need once you've locked up a property? You need, you need buyers, right? So if you're going into another market, if you're working leads in another market and you want to get stuff sold, you're going to want to start doing some, some, uh, research or marketing or analysis on who's there to sell your, your property. So I'm going to show you a real quick, easy way how to do that, right? So we go into Kansas City, Kansas. Mm -hmm. As I said, you've identified some opportunity over here. So you want to start building up your buyer pool. We can go into your filter set and we can go and identify the type of property. And I always suggest you choose the property type being a single family. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going after. That's what we go after. Mm -hmm. And simply go into cash buyers. And now this it's going to give quick you quick list choices is what you're clicking on. Right all here. This is the cash buyers of single family homes in Kansas City, Kansas. This is going to be huge, right? And this is going to be many years worth of Kansas uh, uh, single family home cash buyers. But I would suggest going into ownership info, going into years of ownership and setting your max to one year. These mm. are going to be your cash buyers that have bought within the last 12 months, right? Okay, and guys, maybe you see what he's active. doing here? So he, he selected the quick list and that was 5,500 ish. I think, I think I saw 5,000. Right, let's, let's take it out there and show again. Right. So but originally 5,600, 5,600, even more. So that's, you know, that goes back a long way, right? Probably until they started collecting the data. So in order to find the people that are actively buying, right, they're, they're, they're buying recently, put that to one year, even maybe 0.5 to go to six months. But I think that that's great. One year is the minimum on it, so we can't oh, go one below okay. the solid number. No, on, I love it. I love on, it. On the max. But one year is great, though, because that's the people that are buying properties cash 
within the last year. And those are gonna be the people that you're gonna to wanna to market your deals to. And you can pull that information straight from PropStream. So once you get it, you can have your team cold call those people, you can cold text them, you can send them letters in the mail, um, you can email them if you skip trace them, and you know ask them if they're interested in being added to your buyers list. That's probably the best way that I have found um, selling deals this way, but also you can just mail postcards of deals to these individuals and that also works very 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 well instead of sending a bunch of postcards though paul i found that it's best to just send maybe two or three postcards in a sequence to these individuals and then on the postcard make it very simple just say that you have off-market deals at super discounted prices and if they want to get these in their email or in their text message that they can email or they can go and they can opt into your buyers list or they can even text a code to a number and that way they can opt themselves in that way you're not having to continuously mail these deals to these people but again all of this works right all of these different approaches work and that's why i just absolutely love this so when we're done loading up here i'm going to show you one other cool way because you mentioned the great way to get a hold of buyers which is you know you get their address you know perhaps you you mail them perhaps you do a a, a sequence of, of notifications but you can also call them right you can also yes. Yes. um once this finishes loading up i will mm -hmm. show you where you can filter it out by individual and then mm -hmm. Individual, you can actually save the list and skip trace it within the platform, and boom, you'll have that phone number there immediately. Oh, that's you right. You guys just them. recently added the skip tracing in there, which is we, super yeah, cool. we have the ability to skip trace within the platform. And I don't even think really I've seen that. Yet. Yet. Let's get in yeah. here in one second. <laughs> no Sorry problem. This my, is awesome. Man. Delay. Is... You know, the, the beauties of working from home, the family uses up your bandwidth. That's oh, that's all right, man. No problem. No problem. So yeah, I'm excited to see to see that you guys are doing skip tracing now. That is phenomenal. Um, but yes, cold calling or cold texting and you know, sometimes the skip tracing will give you emails too, which right. is cool. But either way, getting some information about these individuals is all you need. You just need to reach out to them um, and let them know, hey, you have deals. So if you are doing virtual wholesaling or you are going into, you know, a second or a third market, um, again, you may not have buyers in that area, and this is a great way to go about so it. So I'm going to show you some ninja tricks here on, on this uh, on this point. Okay, here. so you're in Kansas City, Kansas, in a market that I'm personally looking to move into. Right. You put your quick list at cash buyer, and you put your property characteristics to single family. Last but not least, you put your ownership max to one. Got it. Right. And there's there. what I'm going to show you is the way to get all the cash buyers or a way to try to get all the cash buyer contact info phone number information okay. individuals right we could separate it and these are just oh, going to be the individuals. Owner type that's smart you it, it basically cut list. us in half didn't it right yeah it, it totally does the, i mean the other half would be your llc's right so this first half these are going to be people that you could save this entire list right we could save this here let's do it mm -hmm. uh let's go add to list we'll create new we'll call it um AA, so it's on top of the list, and we'll call this cash buyers. KC. KC, KC, right? Or KS. KC. All right, so we'll KS. save this. That's now, this right. is going to be our list uh, of cash buyers, individual cash buyers, right? So they're not buying under an LLC, um, and this is going to make it easier for us to be able to skip trace and reach out to them. So once this finishes saving, we can go into our My Properties and we can sort by date we'll look at AA cash buyers mm, i didn't even know you could sort Created. by date either man i'm learning all kinds of stuff here our little hamburger menu here you select that it gives you a couple options for oh sorting. yeah I like makes that. it a lot easier pull the pull the most recent to the top right yeah a lot easier to just organize and view what you got going on but here are our 217 these are our properties if we scroll over all the way to the right um we can see a couple of things let's see uh ownership name let me just show you okay so owner name right these are all individuals right no llc's mm -hmm. you could select your entire list go to actions i'm sorry new campaign and go to skip tracing and then here's our skip tracing oh man this is based awesome on the tier of how many you of have, course your pricing will change and you can select between phones and emails. Oh, look at this, guys. You can select between phones and emails and or or. 
and or or yeah some yeah, people aren't doing anything is... with the emails some people are just calling uh maybe they don't you know they're not set up to email or they just don't want to so you can choose you save a little bit of money if you can split that up yeah split forward it up, with it. or you can get all of them look at exactly. that, that is, and then boom that is you end awesome. up getting your results right but i want to show you the, the the super ninja trick this is one way to get your individual cash buyers that i've bought within one year Okay. The results will come back for the for the ones that we can get phone numbers for. You can simply just call them direct. Mm -hmm. Text message them, pick up your cell phone and call them, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But here's another thing I can show you. Let's go back to our list. Let's go back to where were we? Kansas City, Kansas. Create the filter set again of cash buyers, mm -hmm. single family homes. Max year one. Ownership, max year one, exactly. But now we can and go into corporate. We can do, we can also do um, mixed, which is gonna be your trust and your corporate. So let's do that for this example. Okay. We only got three. Um, let's okay. Do corporate, so 243, right? Okay. So we do 243, these are your LLCs. If you were to skip trace this list from within the platform, you're not gonna get results, right? Cause they're LLCs. Uh, it's not like an individual the system. Yeah, you may pull or... back like one or two random ones that right. found, but usually they're, yeah, they're not really set up to do that, right? But what you can do is you can save this list. We'll do call the same cash buyers. And then we will do- um, Add in an LLC on the back of it or something like that. Use, there you go. We'll hit save. Once this is done way. saving, what we can do is we can actually look for uh, the agent that represented that cash oh, transaction, wow. if it sold through an guys. agent, right? <laughs> so let's go into our my properties. Again, let's go to my date uh, they created, and we'll take the LLC. So 243 LLCs here. If we scroll all the way to the right and we look at our our our. Um, Hmm. Good, good reason why it's not here. If we go to the gear, okay, right, the we're going to see gonna the, the different columns. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have all the columns of data that's visible or not visible, not selected visible. This is why people don't know about this because they got to go digging for it. If you go to the MLS section, you add your agent name, your agent name, MLS. And phone number, email, brokerage name, brokerage phone number, and we hit apply. Holy cow. And then redo your columns here. Now we scroll all the way to the right. Now we're going to have agent name, right? So let's go and sort this by the ones that do have. Oh, wow. Not a ton. It's okay. We got, we got two here, right? It, but it we have like we those, have that information. Two, and we have the phone numbers, right? Here's the agent phone number. Give them a ring. Hey, listen, you know, I uh, saw you represented somebody that bought a cash property over there by one that I have. You know, perhaps you could, you know, help us here and whatever, whatever the whatever. pitch is yeah, or you got the, the, the conversation you know that is. they're selling or do these guys want to sell maybe now? Quick, easy like way to get a hold of your LLCs this way. Yes. Right? You'll have to take a look at the trick. different markets, right? Some markets, there's going to be a huge list of this. A lot of cash transactions that were represented by agents. Uh, and then some, maybe not. So the vast majority of this small list were not. But here you go. You have two phone numbers uh, for ways to get a hold of two buyers on that LLC side of things. Man, this is killer. Guys, analyze your markets. Analyze specific neighborhoods. You can do this by so many different tools over in this little analytics drop down up in the right hand corner here right but you can search by you know square footage or rent or cost of the home or you know um all these different things and then you have at the bottom the statistics that will help you see what's going on over a short period of time or over a longer period of time so doing market analysis has never been easier right we have the tools to look at our own market and really any market that we want to maybe look into going into within the continental united states this is amazing not only do we have the ability to analyze these markets with heat maps and tons of data charts graphs you name it but we have the ability to pull cash buyers within those markets and we can narrow it down not only by individual we can or by entity we can narrow it down by time frame so maybe maybe one year isn't enough and you're maybe wanting to go back three or four you can do that you can pull those property and owners out so you can then skip trace them and in the platform they have skip tracing for both phones and emails which is awesome 
I'm going fast and you're keeping up with me, Paul. This is sweet. <laughs> um, and then from there, you can reach out to these people via postcard, via phone, via call, via text. Um, I like to do email. I like to do postcards. All of these strategies work. It's just what you decide that you want to do. But again, all of them work, which is amazing. And then last but not least, Paul showed us the ninja trick of finding the agent's name and phone number of some of these properties that had sold recently and or of the cash buyer transactions. So we can then reach out to the agent to see if their client has anything that they wanna buy and or sell, as well as if the agent knows of any other properties that may be able to be purchased or, or even cash buyers that they are working with. So, so much value here. This is amazing. Paul, I'm gonna have to get you back on here soon. Thank you so much for coming and showing us some of these ninja tricks. Literally, every time I come on with you, I learn something new. And I feel like today I learned like 10 things. Well, my pleasure, man. There's always something new to learn in PropStream. You know, there's always a lot of tools new. in there. So definitely figure out where the needs are, you know, get comfortable with it within your local market and then see where else you can expand. And you know what? Get those deals done. Get them done. Guys, this is amazing. I've been using PropStream probably going on a year now. I think it's amazing. Um, there'll be a link in this video where you guys can get a free trial for yourself. Go check it out. Not only can you analyze, find the cash buyers, all the things that we talked about in this video, but you can also run comps on individual properties. There's another video that, that uh, Paul and I have made on that already, and I'll link it in this video. Guys, thanks for watching. Paul, thanks for coming on again. I'm gonna have to bring you back soon. I'm grateful for your time. And again, it's always a pleasure seeing and conversing with you my man man thanks david i can't wait till next time brother I'll catch you soon okay appreciate you guys signing off